Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as was the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, let's just dive in and let's start off with this tweet here from Crypto Eddie. So guys, we've seen that Ripple has jumped through some hoops and got their money transfer license granted in 30 states so far. Wow. Looks like things are moving pretty quickly and things are looking a little bit different for Ripple compared to going back just a few months ago before the big announcement around the case. Ever since we've started to see Ripple go full force and get granted some pretty significant licenses, especially around money, finance, you name it. Now, I'm going to go over a few of the states. Also, shout out to uh, Fasal Khan because on his website, it really kind of breaks down the use of this license. And in my opinion, I think that this is pretty significant. Now, first and foremost, in terms of the money transmitter license, what it really means, well, if we scroll down, so as a money services business, you are required to register with the FinCEN and obtain a money transmitter license in the US. What does this allow you to do well it allows you to legally transmit money or monetary instruments such as checks drafts and wire transfers meaning technically speaking ripple could have um an opportunity to be transmitting money settling money and possibly even moving settling checks drafts and even wire transfers this is actually pretty big and it's a huge step in the right direction um and like you know as we really kind of look at what's been happening here it seems as though ripple is gearing up for to like a major full force adoption cycle in the u.s which is huge um but also down here we have a little bit of the options section of how this could be utilized so owned new license application agent of an existing license holder, which is a physical location, online only, and also both online and physical location. Then we have white label. This is actually very um, significant to mention as well, because if we go back to what Quant is doing with Overledger, for example, they could actually white label their technology and allow other uh, institutions, pretty much cloud-based networks as well, uh, to utilize the network, but under their name. It's actually still very beneficial for the network and the ecosystem it's just that it's a white label so that's something to also mention here and then also we have sponsorship which is program manager with iso uh, program manager as well so again some great information there um but also the areas that this is going to go fully live in in terms of the license granted some pretty big states. Um, here you guys have all of these states. And remember, this is all by, if we actually look at the governing body here, this is all by some pretty big names. Securities Commission, uh, we have the Community and Economic Development Division of Banking and Securities, Financial Institutions Department, Securities Department, Banking Departments, State Bank Commissioners, Banking and Finance. I mean, listen, I've said it many times in the past, if we look at that SEC lawsuit, we all we all knew that that was nonsense. Look at some of these substantial names that are tied back to this license grantee. To me personally, as we look at all these names and the substantial weight behind them, it proves that these are the names of these organizations that realize like, listen, you know, we're granting this license because we see the value here. We see what Ripple is. We see what Ripple is becoming. And remember, like all of this is substantial um, in terms of the regulations and the regulatory oversight bodies that have to go and look at this um, and really kind of grant this license. So to me personally, I think that this is very significant to mention. And also, by the way, in terms of the license, this is uh, granted by... Well, I should say it requires you to register with the FinCEN to obtain this by, of course, the FinCEN. If we go back to 2015, we do know that XRP was labeled as a virtual currency. Shout out to Riz XRP for this. Um, and this is something that got mentioned quite a bit in terms of the SEC lawsuit as well. It got brought up multiple times. And um, now, of course, they get the money transfer licenses. XRP is the secret sauce. XRP could very well be the secret sauce. We've talked about this as well. You know, that now that XRP is cleared as a currency, you know, use of XRP 
It's unlimited, right? They could it opens the door. But also, this comes roughly about two months after we seen the Ripple in principle approval for major payments institution license in Singapore. Like I said, ever since, or at least around the same time that we've seen XRP get cleared, we've seen huge moves being made by Ripple. And it's all around these big licenses, which by the way, are obtained through very large organizations. In Singapore, for an example, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, this is the nation's central bank and regulator. And even then, we even said, or uh, we even seen Ripple say, that the license will allow its Singapore branch to offer regulated digital payment token products and services, as well as further scale its customers' use of its crypto-enabled on-demand liquidity platform, which saw 5x growth in the country year, year on year. Again, like every single one of these areas are looking at regulating crypto, utilizing crypto, sourcing digital payment tokens, um, and the power behind this space. Like To me personally, we are on... We are on the brink of a major move in terms of regula regulatory uh, movements, which will ultimately allow for this space to be realized in terms of the power behind it. And also, I do welcome in the idea of all the trash getting wiped out in terms of all the meme coins and all the garbage that we don't really necessarily need. And it really kind of gives the space a little bit of a different viewpoint um, than what is 100% needed, meaning we finally have a mature market where we are actually looking at utility tokens that will be utilized at scale that provide significant value. But also, in terms of the regulatory front of things, uh, the Chamber of Digital Commerce put out a tweet on the 26th which said, we're speaking up for the digital asset and blockchain industry to make sure that creators and companies can thrive. Uh, this is their FIT Act. This got uh, brought up in conversation quite a bit, but um, within this, we do see that today, this is going back to the 21st, uh, the Chamber of Digital Commerce sent a letter to leaders of the House Financial Services and Agriculture Committees responding to a letter from Better Markets published July 11th expressing concerns with draft provisions of the Financial Innovation and Technology for the 21st Century Act. We believe in the importance of a robust and adaptable regulatory framework that reflects the unique characteristics of digital assets while we respect the perspectives offered in the letter. The Chamber believes it's important to use its voice as an industry representative to address certain assumptions, interpretations, and falsehoods related to digital asset regulation that warrant a more nuanced understanding and uh, correction of the record. And uh, some key points, they're talking about the CFTC updated toolkit, uh, which is to regulate crypto uh, overlooks. Like this is going to ensure market integrity and consumer protection. I really do hope that these regulations are not, um, you know, an overreach of power, but they're looking at a more transparent and stable market. Uh, we also do see the addition of innovation to the SEC's mission. So better markets concerns about incorporating innovation into the SEC's mandate risk overlooking the evolving landscape of financial markets. Embracing innovation doesn't undermine the SEC's core duties, but rather equips it to effectively assess and regulate emerging technologies, ensuring a proactive, adaptive regulatory approach that balances traditional mandates with the benefits of technological advancements, which this is one thing that's concerning to me about this is the idea of incorporating even the SEC at all. I do think that the SEC needs to really kind of take a step back and uh, not have any hand in play in this market. I think that the SEC has completely dropped the ball. I think that any major um, chairman of the SEC needs to be investigated and overlooked as well before they do take their position because as we do know, a lot of these players are worth millions and millions of dollars. They have been you know, taking deals. Uh, they come from a substantial banking uh, background. And I do think that they you know, are going to look at this space as a threat more so than uh you know an advancement around technology so to me personally i think that the sec it, it's just one of those agencies i don't think that should have a hand in the space um and uh, of course there's a few other things to look at within this um but as we really kind of look at things it seems as though we are getting a lot of planning in place around regulations 
remember what I've talked about as well, like outside of what we are seeing in the US, I don't think that the US is going to be the one to bring regulations into this space. I think that we are going to see that uh, set by a governing body globally. Uh, one of the biggest things that we've been seeing is the G20 being mentioned with the uh, FSB as well as the IMF and the BIS. Um, 801 underscore XRP actually posted this video. It's about three minutes long. Um, and we do see uh, Ripple XRP fam. All the meetings happen. BRICS, B20, Jackson Hole, Symposium in the same week, all right before the G20 summit in September. India holds the presidency and this G20 summit is all about digital transformation, financial inclusion, bridging the digital and economic divide. The G20 summit, we could get cryptocurrency regulation recommendation, recommendations. No XRP and Ripple are mentioned. Uh, which I didn't really expect XRP or even Ripple to be mentioned at all. This is for the entire industry. Listen closely to this video, though. Should I have the next slide, please, on technology. In the application of technology and trade, there are challenges in terms of nations being at various stages of digital maturity with different levels of digital infrastructure and technology adoption. In addition, increasing number of cyber crimes, the lack of interoperability, and disparity in rules and regulations on digital trade and cross-border data flows can hinder the adoption of Trade 4.0. The task force calls upon the G20 to encourage and facilitate nations to invest in digital infrastructure in emerging economies and in poorly connected regions. The policy recommendations also advocate for facilitating interoperability in standards and protocols for digitizing and exchanging data thus streamlining digital trade transactions. It urges nations to cooperate to address cybersecurity concerns on a large scale across value chains that transcend borders. Diversifying and advancing the services trade, specific policy actions in the area of services that are aimed to ease the advancement of the services trade relate to the classification of services and the disaggregation of embedded services in manufacturing. Facilitating the secure flow of data through addressing regulatory standards while ensuring privacy and cybersecurity safeguards can unlock new avenues of growth. And the paper stresses this aspect and the need to foster LDC participation in the services trade through investment, mentorship, and skill upgradation. And finally, the fourth recommendation the inclusivity agenda is at its inflection point today. The economic slowdown, rising inflation, and risks emerging from geopolitical con conflicts, if left unaddressed, can trigger millions being pushed into extreme poverty, and the paper calls for addressal of these. LDCs, micro, small, and medium enterprises, women and youth remain underrepresented in a, in a global trade, and the policy paper highlights the criticality to bridge the economic divide faced by these segments the, through the creation of opportunities, institutions, platforms, skill building, and appropriate regulation. The task force calls for the development of requisite infrastructure and trade financing for the enhanced participation of marginalized trade participants in global trade, a concerted, collaborative, and cohesive effort through inclusive, inclusive trade and investment policies would be in the true spirit of the concept of the world as one earth, one family, one future. The task force believes that we all together can shape a future where trade and investment flourish, creating a more prosperous, inclusive, and resilient world. Thank you, and thank you for this opportunity. And again, you know, all of this is coming at a significant moment in time where we are seeing, you know, major moves coming from the BRICS. I want you guys to realize that as we look at the BRICS and what's happening around the BRICS, especially with even, you know, the U.S. in question, I want you guys to realize that this is all by plan. Like they want all of this to come to play uh, because guess what? This is all marching forward on into the fourth industrial revolution where we do see a digital system rise. Um, this has been their plan since day one, right? Uh, bring in digital assets, bring in CBDCs, bring in the you know infrastructure, the digital infrastructure. All of this is gearing us up for the major go live around a global system. But first, we do need 
the regulations in place. And I do think that the G20, the IMF, the FSB, they're going to bring in these regulations. Remember, right? Over here, we do see this week lived up to the hype as transformational and historic. A new global paradigm is unfolding before us. Argentina, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, United Arab Emirates, all added to BRICS. Other phases will follow concerning expansion. BRICS nations are clearly aiming to challenge the dollar's dominance in oil and gas trade. Everyone is hyper-focused on this, when I do think that everyone should be focused on what's happening on the back end of things. A notable development in 2021 was China's agreement to invest $400 billion into Iran over 25 years in a deal that ensured them a steady flow of discounted Iranian oil. More on this next week. And again, look at all the major players tied to this. You guys are all aware. India has been the biggest focus point for me personally uh, because we do know that with this, we see over here. G20 set to crystallize global crypto rules as India wraps up presidency. The G20 nations supported by the FSB and the IMF under India's presidency are set to bring into implementation perhaps the first global crypto regulations ahead of the leader summit in September. Do you honestly believe that all of these big moves and everything that is happening around the, the global financial space are not incorporating crypto? It's all to gear us up for a global shift. Everyone is looking at the US dollar. Everyone is looking at what's happening around de-dollarization. I want, I want you all to understand that this is their play. This is their play. They're going to give us a problem, right? They're going to wait for the reaction, and then they're going to bring in the solution. The solution has always been digital currencies, CBDCs, you know, adopting blockchain, digital assets, because listen, go, go all the way back to 2020. What were they planning before 2020? They were talking about digital assets, digital currencies, central bank digital currencies. And then guess what they, they need it? They need it to eliminate um, use of physical cash. The pandemic brought that in, right? Not a lot of people were going out and using physical cash. They were using you know, uh, their debit cards and credit cards online. So what they seen was a significant downfall of use of physical cash. So then they were like, all right, well, look at, you know, we're already seeing a downfall of, uh, you know, physical cash use. So now is the time to use digital currencies. You know, physical cash is, is dirty. Don't use physical, physical cash. Use digital, digital assets. Use digital currencies. That's what they're going to push us into. But everything that we've been seeing, in order for them to, you know, say that they're going to uh, keep the dollar as a reserve currency and they, you know, retain anchor, if you will, for the U.S., what they're going to use is the idea of a CBDC. They're going to say a CBDC is going to protect us. But what's really going to happen is uh, we're going to see the entire global system become decentralized. CBDCs are going to launch. We're not going to have a reserve currency. We're going to have a, a global bridge currency could very well be XRP, could very well be multiple currencies. I've talked about this, right? Medium of exchanges, it could be multiple ones. Doesn't matter, right? But what we will see is the global system underpinned by digital assets, um, you know, tokenized reserves, and all of this is on par with the idea of the, the, the new SDR um, global system model that we've shared multiple times where you have gold being the key uh, piece but then you also have CBDCs that are underpinned by gold as well with digital assets. Could it be gold? Could very well be gold. Could be anything that really kind of is backing it, but it has to be something of significant value, meaning it could be gold, silver, things like that. But I do believe that crypto is a key player behind this. Um, I don't think that it's a coincidence that we are seeing a lot of you know, major moves from some big names within the BRICS um, with, of course, the G20 and even the IMF and the BIS um, and the FSB, which we do know that Ripple comment on those uh, regulatory frameworks already. We do get a big update in September around this. But to me personally, as we look at Ripple, they are full, like full steam ahead. They are pushing and pushing and pushing. Uh, they're achieving some very incredible things, things that you know, going back a couple months ago, you'd probably say, no way are they going to get this. Guess what? Now, 
they are going full force on a lot of these major licenses. They're getting a lot of uh, regulatory acceptance at this point. And to me personally, I really don't think that there's a lot in Ripple's way right now uh, for US adoption. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And uh, with that being said, guys, this has been Nick. Peace out.